Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. In today's video guys, we are going to explain what causes valve lifter noise and we will explain guys what it sounds like. Stay with us, we will have a scene, we will start the vehicle guys and we will show you what it sounds like. Now, we will guys, uh, we will we'll cover everything from start to finish, we will explain what needs to be done to replace your valve lifters and what causes that noise rattle in the top end of the engine which is terribly annoying guys and usually you can notice that especially if the vehicle is cold or right before oil change when the engine oil gets wore out you will notice more of valve lifter noise we will guys have more than 200 videos on every car we get at the shop because our mission guys is to save you as much money as we can so make sure you subscribe guys in return like the video and drop a comment below so let's start on it now we will go ahead start the car and show you what it sounds like so we'll go ahead guys on this Mazda, it has a 4 cylinder 2.3 engine, we'll go ahead start the engine, show you what it sounds like and then we'll continue explaining what needs to be done. So let's go ahead and start it now. So this is guys what the valve lifter noise sounds like. Hear that ticking, tick, 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 tick. Okay, that's the valve lifter noise guys, right there. And it changes usually with the RPMs. When you give it RPMs, it will go faster and then it will, it will uh, slow down with lower RPMs. So let's give it gas. So, you guys heard what the car sounds like, right? Turbo, like that valve lifter noise is very uh, fine tapping, like tip, 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 tip on top of the engine, guys, especially on cold starts or wore out engine oil. Uh, but eventually, when they get bad, guys, they will do it all the time. There are two different types of uh, valve lifters, usually manual, okay, uh, that you have to adjust, and ones that are hydraulic. Stay, we'll, we'll stay with us, we'll cover all that. But let's first uh, explain quick what needs to be done to get to the valve lifters because people will go to the shop. They'll tell them, okay, it costs $1,000 to replace them and people will go nuts and be like, how you can charge me so much money? It involves a lot of work, guys, and we'll explain why. This is a Mazda here, but most of the new vehicles will use that concept. This is a four-cylinder engine. If you have four, six, eight-cylinder, the procedure is about the same. For V6 and V8, it's even more complicated because you have two-cylinder heads. That would work pretty much, guys. So, first, guys, you need to remove your valve cover. Okay, once you remove your valve cover, you're going to notice you have your camshafts here. And under the camshaft, okay, right here, uh, you will notice under each one of those there is valve. Okay, and between the valve and the camshaft there is a cap. Okay, you can kind of see them. Okay, these things. Those are your valve lifters. Stay with us, we'll explain what needs to be done to replace those. Now, you guys need to remove valve cover. If you have timing belt, you will need to remove your timing belt. You will need to... Uh, for most newer vehicles you need to use special tools and you can check out where we get ours uh, in the description of the video below. In addition guys, if you have timing chain, okay, you have to remove your timing cover guys. Okay, this is the timing cover and usually on the timing cover it's the one that's on the side of the engine. It holds the engine mount, uh, let's say power steering pump on this one. Okay, this is the engine put together, that's the same engine guys. This is the timing cover here. You can see the power steering pump is in the way, water pump is in the way, this pulley is in the way, you need to remove crankshaft pulley, and in some cases even AC compressors. So quite a bit of work, right? So you remove all that, you get to the timing chain, okay, we remove the timing chain, it is right here guys, and if you got to that point, I would recommend to put a new chain or a new belt on your vehicle, whatever you have. And once you do all that guys, okay, you have the camshaft bearings here, Okay, the one that we already removed, you need to install them exactly in the same order you remove them and the torque specs and all that guys. Okay, you need to find for your specific vehicles. Uh, also, every vehicle we get at the shop guys, we'll make videos for that. We'll be tear tearing them down completely, taking the engines apart, vehicles apart, so we can guys save you quite a bit of money. Now, once you remove all that guys, okay, you're going to remove, okay, your camshaft. We just get the camshaft, lift it up, okay, and this is, guys, your valve lifters. For this 16 valve engine, we have 16 lifters. 
Okay, eight on the uh, intake camshaft, eight on the exhaust one. Some, like Audis, even they have 20, 20 valves on the four cylinder engines. So uh, it's a really complicated deal, guys. And, okay, now, remember how we had the camshaft here. This is the lifters, guys. Okay, you have two, three type of lifters. Hydraulic that are self-adjustable and the ones that are manually adjustable. Those are manual, they're not hydraulic. The hydraulic ones usually have holes in them that the oil pumps pressure and it adjusts the lifters. Now, in this case, guys, this is a manual one and it has a number on the inside. Okay, you can see this one says 502 number. Now, let me just grab one more. Okay, the one next to it. Probably it will be a different number, guys. Okay, this one, it says 460, uh, okay, 462. So definitely, guys, different thickness. The smaller the number, the thinner the lifter is. The bigger the number, the, the taller the lifter is. Now, <coughs> that specific, guys, gap, okay, the distance between the lifter and the camshaft when the valve is closed, okay, should be specific for your vehicle. Let's say 0.1 millimeter. It really depends on the vehicle, so you always have to double check with your manual. But if that distance is too much, What's causing, what is going to happen, you will hear the camshaft knocking on the lifter. When it hits it, it's going to knock and eventually it can even wear it out and uh, punch a hole in it. So that's not good guys, when they get wore out, okay, you have some noise coming out of them. Also they'll get wore out on the side, check out the wear on this one, it has only 90,000 miles. That shiny ring, that's, that is the wear. So, that's another thing guys. If, if you guys put too big of a lifter, let's say this one needs 462, but you put 522, when you install your camshaft, it's going to press down on the valve enough that your engine will lose some compression because the valve will be open. It will never close all the way. You don't want that to happen because you can ruin your engine that way too. So always have to be in specs and we have a video how to do, it's called valve lash on an engine. Okay, so check it out guys. Now, the Hydraulic ones, you pretty much replace them the same way. They have different shapes sometimes, uh, but hydraulic ones, uh, they're self-adjustable. You pretty much just replace them, put them in, and they're self-adjustable. But it takes quite a bit of work, as you can see. So hopefully, guys, the video will be helpful to some of you. Please, guys, hit that subscribe button for more videos. And see you guys next time.